Hey guys, this is Steve with Tronix Fix. It's time to disassemble the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. Each of the Joy-Cons has four tri-wing screws. One there, one there, one there, and one there. So we'll remove those first. After those are removed, we will separate the two halves of each controller. To do that, I'm gonna get my fingernail right under here. And there is a kind of a snap connector right in this location. And then I'm gonna pull it apart. And we don't wanna pull it apart too far. As you can see, there are some ribbon cables right there so we don't want to pull this half off yet but we'll just flip it over and we can get a little bit of a look at the inside and now we'll do the same thing with the other controller i'm going to be using a pry tool to pry up on the battery i'm going to get it right up under the battery like this and just pry it up gently we don't want to tear these wires down here obviously so we'll pry it up just like that and now we have the battery removed and now we'll remove the battery holder. There are three screws holding this in, one there, one there, and one right down here. And these are Phillips double zero screws. After those screws have been removed, this will lift out, but don't jerk it out as there is a ribbon cable still attached right here. So we'll, we will disengage the black locking tab and remove the ribbon cable. Now that the ribbon cable has been removed, this will come out. And now we can get a better look at the full motherboard. The next thing we're gonna do is remove the ribbon cables for this part. There's one here and one here. Both have locking tabs that we'll need to disengage and then pull the ribbon cables out. And then we'll also disconnect the battery connector right here so we can remove the battery as well. With those ribbon cables removed, we can now remove this back part of the case. Now it's time for the battery. We're gonna use a pry tool and just get up there and pry very gently to get the battery connector off. And there we have it. And now we'll unplug the rumble motor from the motherboard. And for this, we're gonna use a small pair of needle nose pliers and we're gonna be very careful not to tear anything off. We're just gonna grab the connector very gently, wiggle it back and forth as we pull, and there we have it. Next, we're gonna remove the minus button, which is right here, and the L button, which is right there. They're connected by one Phillips screw here, two Phillips screws here, and this ribbon cable that goes down to the white connector with the gray locking tab. And we'll also remove the L button itself, which is not really held in by anything, so you have to be very careful to remove it and get the spring out that comes with it. There is a spring there that pushes the button back after you push the button, so we need to make sure that that spring is not lost and stays intact. And there you have the button with the spring on the end. Now it's time to remove the actual physical buttons. And now the buttons just come right out. If you ever have a problem with your minus button or your L button not working, there's a good chance that these physical little buttons right here, there's one button right there, and here's the other button. There's a good chance that these have just gone bad, and as you can see, they're fairly easily replaceable as you can just get a new ribbon cable with the buttons and reinstall it into your controller. And now it's time for the analog stick. It has two screws, one screw here, one screw here, both Phillips, along with the ribbon cable with the black locking tab right here. And there we have the analog stick. We'll remove that next. You have to be very careful, there is a um, black kind of film right here and if you just jerk up on it you're going to tear it and we don't want that so just be careful when you're removing this if you ever have a problem with your analog sticks moving on their own or just not working correctly this is the part that needs to be replaced and as you can see it's fairly simple to replace and these controllers are awesome because they are pretty modular and you can just replace certain sections if needed next we will remove the motherboard there's one phillips screw here and one phillips screw here and now the motherboard is loose, so we're just gonna pull up on it gently and it's gonna come right out. So here we have the motherboard for the Joy-Con controller. So here's one side of it with all the chips and the connectors as you can see. And then here's the other side of it with the four buttons here and then another button right there. That's the back side of it. Next is the rumble motor. It is just held in by adhesive, so you can get a pry tool to pry up right down here if you need to and we're gonna do that gently. And this one comes right up, so we're just gonna take it out like this. And as you can see, there is a small strip of adhesive right here. We're not gonna touch it because we don't wanna get grease from our fingers on it, because we do wanna install it back in and make sure that it still sticks. So the easiest way is just to remove this button pad carefully. 
And as you, can, as you can see, this button fell out. These buttons, you don't have to keep track of too well because if you notice, there are uh, tabs right in here. And then there's also grooves on the button itself. And those grooves just match up to the tabs. And as you can see, that just fits right down in there. So if you ever need to remove the buttons, that's how you do it. And then when you're done, you just put the button pad right over, match it up, and then just push it down, and that's installed. Now it's time to reinstall all the parts into our Joy-Con controller. So we have all the buttons in. We always wanna make sure that the button pads are all the way down how they should be, and, at the, and that the buttons are fully inserted into their grooves. And then we'll install the vibration motor. We push down firmly to make sure that it gets stuck back in place, and then we install the motherboard. And then we install the two screws on the motherboard. Now that the motherboard is installed, we install our analog stick. Now it's time to reinsert our buttons in the top, so we'll do that next. And after the Phillips screws are installed, we do need to install the ribbon cable into its connector and then lock down the locking tab. Now that those buttons are in, we need to install the L button that goes right up here making sure that we get the spring in the correct place. Now one of the ways you can do this is set it so the spring is kind of out of place, but the button is lined up correctly, and then just move the spring into place using tweezers or something really small and flat. And there we have our button in place, and as you can see, it does click correctly. Now it's time to install the gray battery holder and install the screws, but first we're gonna plug in the rumble strip motor into its connector on the motherboard. And one other thing we need to do before we install the battery holder is we do need to install the back of the controller and we need to install the ribbon cables right here and right here. Now that our battery holder is installed with its ribbon cable and three screws securely installed, we'll reinstall the battery. We just need to make sure that that's pushed all the way on. And then we just lay our battery down back where it was and make sure we stick it down as firmly as we can back onto the adhesive. After our battery is installed, we just turn the back side back over. We make sure everything's aligned how it should be. And then we just push it together. And as you can see, it's snapped back into place there and in the front. Now we just reinstall our four tri-wing screws onto the back. And now you know what's inside of the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con. We're not gonna be disassembling this Joy-Con as it's essentially exactly the same as the other one. It's just in a little bit different configuration. If you guys ever have a problem with your Joy-Con rails, these are replaceable. As you can see, they're just screwed in to the Joy-Con itself and so those are replaceable. Also, if you guys ever have any problems with your Nintendo Switch, any of your PS4s, the original, the Slim, or the Pro, or if you have any problems with your Xbox One or Xbox One S, you can find me at tronixfix.com or pretty much anywhere on social media, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. So just let me know if you have anything you need to send in for repairs. Thanks for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it and want to see more. And please subscribe if you want to keep updated on all of our videos. Thanks for hanging out today. I hope you guys have a great day.